the hardest part is trying to look normal when your whole world is on fire. That's why I like the woods. I'm, it's just so peaceful and so beautiful. Peace, peace of mind. That's all I ever pray for is peace. It's, it's legendary. It's a legendary trail, legendary journey. What makes the Appalachian Trail special is a personal experience where it's man against nature for 2,186 miles. It's a big undertaking to, you know, commit yourself to, you know, sometimes up to six months having to just rely solely on your feet, five million steps. It starts in Georgia, Virginia, then it comes up through New Jersey, New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, and into Maine. The most remote part of the entire trail is the 100-mile wilderness between Monson and Mount Katahdin, Maine. There are no houses, there are no roads, there are no cars, and it's, it's very rough terrain. Four cheese mashed potatoes, candy bars, sunflower seeds. I think I might have heard of it from one of the hikers originally was about this idea of food drops in the middle of the wilderness so that the hikers didn't have to carry so much weight. I was doing drywalling. I had all these five gallon buckets <laughs> and I come up with the idea of I could put the food in the buckets and hang the buckets in the tree and make little maps to tell them where to find their buckets. It saved them a lot of packing a lot of weight. It's just rewarding, gratifying to be able to help people out in that way. I'm Ponytail Paul. I live in Dover Foxcroft, Maine. I'm 50 years old and I'm considered a trail angel. <laughs> It began with toys, simple wooden animated pull toys, and it just began to evolve. I did more elaborate toys. Business grew, it doubled every year for 10 years. I went from two employees to four employees to eight employees to 16 employees and onward and onward up. I had a wife and two boys, a beautiful little house here in town, um, you know, picket fence and the whole nine yards. I had my first flashback in church, and all of a sudden I just started shaking and things kind of grayed out. It was the incubation and terror from a very early age. I was just terrified of my father's wrath. And they call it the dilemma of the ruptured identity, that what you've been is not the true you. And the symptoms start welling up, flashbacks, and made me really withdraw from society and from life. I'd sit in my shop and just shake and cry. I had to file bankruptcy and I was penniless, just living in an abandoned building. The sickness just overtook me and I couldn't talk to people and didn't know why. I started going out into the woods. It was just a therapy for me, help heal myself. The first hikers I helped were uh, elderly ladies that just came off the trail and uh, wanted to ride. They were standing on the side of the road with backpacks. I went to pick up <laughs> the pack and put it in. I was like, oh my God. And they said, yeah, we're through hikers. We're coming from Georgia and we're going to Baxter State Park, Mokotan. I began to meet people from all walks of life, all aspects, you know, all different reasons. Uh, military guys who'd come back from war, people going through divorce, people losing jobs, people just needed time to themselves. Get him heated up. Oh, hell yeah. Trail magic in the middle of the 100 mile, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> oh, what's this? Potato salad! Woo! 
There's potato salad, there's, there's cookies, there's donuts. The trail seems to draw out a power that it's, I know it's drawn it out for me is to develop trust, be able to trust in people, and they trust it in me. I've seen it change a lot of people's lives in very positive ways. It's changed mine. Helping Appalachian Trail hikers, you know, when they're going through difficult situations, I'm helping them, but they're helping me at the same time. I'm starting to find peace, peace of mind.